Hey there, Shirtlight here. You've probably heard of the MS-18E camper, maybe even watched the 080 War in the Pocket OVA. It's a fast machine, taking some serious firepower, while at the same time being rather like luster when it comes to armor. This, of course, is reflected in the games, though the chain mines are often hit or miss, depending on the game. In the case of the Gundam Bell franchise, I'll show you a miss that became a hit. An unexpected improvement, but a welcome one. So, let's start with Gundam Bell Tactics, the first game of the franchise. Featuring the rosters of Mobile Suit Gundam, OFMS MS Team, War in the Pocket, and G3 from the MSV series. This game also has the camper, albeit heavily underpowered. Outside of the special attack, you were basically stuck with a shotgun and uh, uh, this thing. Yeah, the chain mines in this one are a joke. To put it simply, the chain mine attack in this game consists of a close ranged horizontal swipe that deploys the mines. Visually, it is pretty close to the OVA's depiction, however, functionally, it's a doozy. First of all, the effective range sucks, not to mention the fact that the angle stays the same and the cooldown is rather unforgiving. Now, if that alone was the only issue, it would still be a decent iteration of the weapon. A slightly watered down version of the Gundam vs Gundam Next Plus chain mine, but nothing too egregious. However, this one does have a couple more flaws than that. So, the way chain mines work in this game is that after your stiff attack animation hits something, the chain mines will physically attach to the mobile suit and explode after a while. There isn't any initial hit stun, mind you, only the one after the mines explode. Which means that you're gonna be a sitting duck while you wait for the mines to do their thing. And to top it all off, even when you get a clean hit in, you still have two things to worry about. First of all, for some odd reason, you can still get stunned by something, which cancels out the whole attack. Even after the mines are firmly placed, and secondly, the damage is rather inconsistent, mainly due to shield related shenanigans. In the next installment, Gundam Mill Royale, the chain mines got a couple of slight improvements. And by improvements, I mean short fuse, slightly faster swing speed, the option to upgrade the damage. So at the very least, there was a slight band-aid put on the mines. The real change came in Gundam Battle Chronicle, where the chain mines got a major rework. Instead of the janky and limited swings, it is replaced by a much cooler move that looks like a combination of Guff's heat rod attack and that one towel whipping move. Visuals aside, it could now basically function in the same vein as the heat rods, which means that just like the heat rods, it could hit the targets at larger distance and many different angles. After you hit something with it, it got briefly stunned and either perished in the initial explosion or got heavily damaged when the rest of the chain mine detonated as well. Believe it or not, the improvements didn't end there. Thanks to the refined upgrade system, you could tune up various parameters of the weapon, greatly increasing its usefulness. Gundam Bell Universe didn't change it too much, so this brings us to the latest UC entry of the franchise. Gundam Assault Survive, released on PSP in the early months of 2010. Having introduced various upgrade parts, Gundam Assault Survive basically delivered the cherry on the top of the cake. Parts like the new manipulator and concealed arm are more than suited for cutting down on the cooldown time, not to mention the synergies with other parts as well. So. That was the tale of the dangly yet volatile weapon throughout the game series, and I have to admit, it was pretty fun trying to lay about the jankier ones in futile efforts to make them viable. Should you happen to enjoy this video, there's buttons below and the comment section in case you want to let me know. With that said, have a good one. Shirtlight signing out.